How's it and welcome back. Today I'm going to go through my most essential survival gear, the stuff that I keep in my bag even if I'm just going out on a day hike. Promise I'm not adding a lot of weight to the bag here, but I am going to save you a lot of trouble in an emergency. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. episode I wanted to go through some of the equipment or the gear that I use in the survival skills Africa video. I've taken out basically my 10 most important items, things that I carry with me in the bush even if I'm just going on a little day hike and this is really stuff that I um, find has multiple uses so it replaces having to take a whole bunch of gear so you can use some of these things for dual purposes um, and things that I really think one should not be in the wilderness without. I am going to be posting a series of videos based on the Survival Skills Africa video where I have grouped certain skills together for easy reference so that you can go and find the video on um, how to search for water in the wilderness, how to navigate, how to make a field compass, building shelters, um, different kinds of survival fires. Um, so that you've got those for easy reference and if you haven't managed to sit still through the entire hour-long video of survival skills you've got the short version to go to. First on my list and something I never even leave the house without irrespective of where I'm going is a water bottle and preferably you want something that you can boil water in. So this is an aluminium canteen um, with a nesting cup. What I find really useful about this is you can cook in the nesting cup at the same time that you're actually boiling water. So this canteen cup has so many uses and um, I've even used it as a hot water bottle um, at night when it's been really cold. So making hot water bottles forms part of your thermoregulation especially in emergency shelters where you don't necessarily have your normal sleeping system with you. If you're traveling through really arid conditions you might even want to keep multiple canteens. I really recommend this over a plastic bottle because you can actually use it to boil your water whereas a plastic bottle you're kind of dependent on filtering or um, purifying your water with either tablets or something else where making a fire boiling your water doesn't use any of your resources. The other function that a canteen cup has is that you can actually use it as a digging tool. Remember that being able to carry water with you is absolutely imperative especially in dry environments. Water is so valuable because you don't know when the next time is going to be that you're going to come across that water. The other thing that these canteen cup combinations are great for is that you can actually use the pouch that they come with. In the Survival Skills Africa video I was using a different pouch for my canteen cup. I think I've retired that one after that video. Um, so I've moved on to the next one and these are great because you can attach them to your belt so you don't need to carry your water inside your bag you can attach it separately to your belt so if you're just going out foraging or collecting resources or firewood you can just put it on your belt you don't have to carry your entire bag with you from your campsite. These are also great as little pockets that you can forage or um, stack some eggs in especially if you've had to climb a tree or you've been in like very precarious terrain um, and you're struggling to actually carry everything in your hands it helps to have a little pouch that you can attach to your belt um, that you can put all of the things that you've gathered into. Another thing I usually keep in my bag is a water filtration system. So this is a Sawyer Mini. As it happens it doesn't remove um, viruses from your water. It does however remove um, bacteria and protozoa so it makes your water that much safer to drink. It's got a clean side and it's got a dirty side um, and there's a really nice packet or a, um, a bag that attaches to it that I can collect water with and then drink straight from the water source. This is really important in instances where you for example don't have the opportunity to boil your water. Either you're in a really arid environment and you don't have the resources to make a fire so having an option that you can filter um, and purify water on the go is really imperative. 
not all water filtration systems on the market are made equal so preferably get something that removes both bacteria and viruses and protozoa from your water and that will give you the best option for water filtration these are especially useful in very arid conditions where any water you find even if you dig a seep well um, is going to be really muddy you'll want to remove a lot of the mud and the debris from your water and you can do that through filtering it a couple of times in different ways but taking that water that muddy water and boiling it is just going to give you a mouthful of sand um, and it is going to um, reduce the lifespan of your water filtration system by putting really muddy water through it but at least you'll be able to get some drinking water out of that the other thing I highly recommend is keeping some paracord in your bag so that you can actually make a bow drill kit from that cord it's really difficult to make cordage that's strong enough in a hurry um, in the wilderness in order to make a bow drill kit so it really helps if you've got a bit of cordage you can harvest it from your clothing if you need but it's really great to just have something to build shelters with and paracord is great because you can take the inner strands apart and the outer sleeve you can still use as cordage um, or as rope while the inner parts can be used as tinder or um, to build traps or snares or things like that so keep some paracord in your bag it's really versatile it will hang your gear off the ground not all paracords made equal though so have different cordage in your bag something really strong and robust that you can build shelters or platforms off the ground with is also going to be of a whole lot of value to you in the wilderness it also helps to have really strong cordage that you can hoist things up or down if you need to from a really young age i've gone camping and i learned from a friend that um, once you'd always take a space blanket or a mylar blanket with you when you go camping so I found a lot of value in putting a mylar blanket underneath my sleeping bag. It reflects my body heat back to me and it helps me to stay warm. So mylar blankets are quite versatile because they're such, they're basically plastic with a layer of silver on. Um, and the idea is that they reflect your body heat back to you, but they are also super waterproof. So if you don't have a waterproof footprint to sleep on, maybe you've just taken a top or a poncho with you. I and mean, you don't have anything to form a ground sheet you can use your mylar blanket mylar blankets are also really great to reflect heat back to you from the inside of your shelter and they can be used as waterproofing for the inside of a shelter so for example if you're building a debris shelter but you're not managing to waterproof it sufficiently and you're expecting bad weather then you can use the mylar blanket on the inside of your shelter um, to waterproof that even further because they're so shiny they're also really great for reflecting light and signaling for help if you need to remember that if you've only got one mirror but the help that you're seeking or you're trying to signal to is in the opposite direction of the sun you're going to have a hard time reflecting the sun in that direction you're basically only going to cast a shadow so if you've got a, a signal mirror and you've got a mylar blanket secondly then you can use the one to reflect light off the other and mylar blankets because they are so reflective even being carried over you um, as a sun shield can also reflect sunlight back and be a passive beacon for help that somebody might spot from the air or from far away because mylar blankets are waterproof they can also be used to collect water especially rainwater. so they are so lightweight and yet so versatile it really is not worth leaving the house without a mylar blanket so stick one in your bag in fact sometimes i even take two with me then i've got the option of using one as a blanket while i'm sleeping on top of the other just remember because they're so waterproof they're not breathable so you might end up with a bit of condensation on the inside of that mylar blanket something i found a lot of value in in the wilderness is my silky saw so this is a folding saw it is a pull saw not a push saw so i can only grind through the wood when i'm pulling through the wood you do get saws folding saws that are push and pull saws i believe the Baco laplander saws are push and pull saws but at the rate that this saw grinds through wood i honestly can recommend that it doesn't matter what folding saw you get just get a folding saw um, this is great for processing wood for building traps for building shelters um, i've put this saw to really good use and somebody made a good recommendation and said keep an extra blade with you in the wilderness so that if it breaks for whatever reason um, you've got an extra blade because this is a high carbon steel saw i can also use it to strike a um, flintstone if i need to get fire and because it's got a 90 degree spine on it it's also going to give me some really great sparks off of my ferro rod 
Even if I, for whatever reason, don't have a knife, um, I can use my silky saw to start fire. Now, once again, you get folding knives at um, on multi-tools. They've got a saw on it and they've got a blade on it. And it feels like putting those two pieces of equipment in one piece of equipment is really a win. I actually can recommend keeping both pieces of equipment. Having two separate blades really is worthwhile. In the Survival Skills Africa video, I actually used a different knife than the one that I've got here. Um, I've been using this Kabar knife in that video and it needs a bit of TLC. It's been through, um, been through the rigors, but um, this is a very nice knife as well. Remember the longer the blade is, the more difficult it becomes to do finer carving tasks and the easier it becomes to do more um, gross motor sort of hacking and um, processing firewood is much easier with a longer blade. That's another disadvantage of the blade that you get on a multi-tool like a Victorinox knife. Because it's a really short blade, it becomes more difficult for you to process firewood um, to baton things with that short blade. Whereas this knife, because it's got such a long, big blade, um, and it's such a robust knife, I can easily delimb trees and things like that um, with this knife. And there are many different knives on the market, so really, Try out different ones, decide whether you like a Scandi Grive, do you prefer a hunting knife, do you prefer more a bushcrafty knife, what kind of grip or what kind of handle do you like on the knife, what kind of sheath do you like. These items are my personal ones but you can substitute whatever you prefer in place of these items. I just really recommend you keep a saw, um, a fixed blade knife, a water filtration system, a ferro rod but substitute whatever brand you like in here. Shelter is one of our most important survival priorities when we are in the wilderness, but we seldom actually carry a whole shelter system with us into the bush. Often we only want to carry something like a jacket, and personally I think that your clothing forms the first layer of your shelter. But in those instances where you don't have a whole shelter system or you don't want to carry a top um, or a tent or a hammock or something with you, you're just going out for the day, at least carry something like a plastic bag that you could make a makeshift shelter out of. In a recent adventure into the bush, Indy and I got caught off guard. Um, we checked the weather forecast, no rain forecast, this is the Western Cape and suddenly there was rain. And instead of setting up a whole big shelter or rushing to build an emergency debris shelter, I simply used a plastic bag. Now this is quite a big plastic bag. Um, so I fit into it sitting upright like this with my bag um, and Indy, both of us fit into this plastic bag. So keeping something like a plain plastic bag, especially a clear one, is really worthwhile because you can make a shelter out of it. A clear plastic bag is also great to use as a transpiration bag. So you can take a clear plastic bag, put it over the branch of a tree, leave it in the sun for a couple of hours and the leaves from that tree are going to transpire and the um, byproduct of that is water the water will get caught up in your bag and you've got some water so in an environment where you're really struggling to find water you can use a clear plastic bag as a transpiration bag the other option that you have is to set up a solar still um, personally I don't find transpiration bags or solar stills to yield a lot of water but it is going to be absolute gold to you if you can't find any other water another item that I carry around with me in just about every bag that I've got is a ferro rod. So a lighter is great because a lighter gives you an instant flame but the problem with a lighter is that first of all it's a depletable resource you can go through lighter fluid quite quickly if you're constantly using it to make fire whereas a ferro rod is something that's going to last for a very long time. So in the instance of a lighter, um, I would use a lighter for emergency fire making if I really need to fit, get a fire going quickly. Let's say I'm trying to prevent hypothermia, I really need to make a fire very fast um, or all of the materials in my environment are wet and I can't um, find any dry tinder that I can use a ferro rod quite easily to make fire with. I might then consider using a lighter instead of a ferro rod. But a ferro rod, because it's not um, depleted as easily, you can get many more fires from a ferro rod than you can with a lighter. It's good to keep a ferro rod as your primary option for fire making. In fact, if you're in a long-term survival situation, your bow drill kit would probably be your better option for um, your go-to fire making kit. And then a ferro rod, because it is still a depletable resource, it just takes much longer to deplete a ferro rod 
um, you would use a ferro rod if for whatever reason you can't get a fire going with a bow drill kit. Maybe you're injured. Um, you can start a fire if you're injured with a ferro rod. And if you're really in an emergency situation where you need to get a fire going instantly, that is when you will use your lighter. Now, of course, one does need to actually practice the skill of making fire with a ferro rod, making fire with a bow drill, and practice using different kinds of woods um, for making bow drill fires because you will need to adjust your technique a little bit. If you've got a harder wood, um, you might need to drill first to accumulate quite a bit of sawdust and then only try to ignite that sawdust thereafter. Whereas if you've got a very soft wood, you might be able to drill, get sawdust and light it into an ember um, all in one go. The same goes for ferro rod fire making. You want to practice that skill and have that skill down um, before you get into a situation where you really need to use a ferro rod for fire making. Now this is not a flint, this is a ferro rod. It is a man-made material, whereas flint stone is usually a stone that you'll find in a riverbed um, or lying around and that's just basically going around taking something like a high carbon steel striker, trying out different kinds of stones and um, using those stones then to light tinder or to ignite something like punk wood. Whereas a ferro rod, you would take your knife, um, the spine of your knife and scrape along the ferro rod and generate sparks off of that ferro rod. Um, so there is a difference between a ferro rod and a flint. The other thing that's really nice about my Kabar knife, about the BK62 knife, is because it is also a high carbon steel, I can use that to generate sparks from a flint stone. Um, so you can go around the bush and just try, try using a high carbon steel knife, try using your silky saw, um, try using a carbon striker or a high carbon steel striker and see what you can get sparks off of in the bush. So a compass is not something that I actually use very often in the wilderness but for the case where you are lost, which I have been in the wilderness, it is really valuable to be able to tell direction with a compass. You can put a stick in the ground and you can tell the direction from the stick in the ground method but you need the sun for that and the weather is not always that reliable so if you can't see the sun then you may have a bit of trouble actually determining direction with the stick in the ground method. The other option that you have is an analog watch but once again you need to be able to determine where the sun is um, to use an analog watch as a compass. Should you not have either a compass or an analog watch available to you to determine direction you can magnetize a needle using your knife um, or a bobby pin, something like a safety pin can be used in order to magnetize that needle. I somewhat put it inside my canteen cup, floated in a little bit of water on a leaf um, and just scraping one half of that needle is going to magnetize it um, and that will determine direction. <clears throat> in the instance where you really are in a survival situation and you're probably dehydrated, possibly hypoglycemic, you're not functioning or thinking clearly anymore, having something as clear-cut as a compass that shows north is in this direction is going to be helpful in keeping you from traveling in circles. You can also use it to shoot an azimuth on your map and to figure out where you went wrong in the first place. Um, so it really is worthwhile just having a compass in your bag, even if it's a small button compass or something like one of those, um, those you get those survival bracelets that's got like a little tiny button compass and a bit of paracord. That's actually really useful to have something like that with you. Now that's most of the gear that I have in my bag, but there are a couple of other things that I really recommend you keep with you. Something that didn't even make it out of my bag in the Survival Skills Africa video was my medical kit. Even though it doesn't come out that often, I honestly recommend that you keep a decent medical kit in your bag for those emergencies um, where you need to dress a wound, maybe you've accidentally cut yourself and make sure that it's got two tourniquets in it, preferably windless tourniquets because they're the most effective. Um, so not to be underestimated, that time that you really need this medical kit, you're going to be so grateful that you've got it. You can also use a tea candle or even just the wick of a tea candle um, to warm yourself up or to get a fire going. So if you can't make fire with a ferro rod really easily or you're struggling to get a bow drill fire going, 
um, and you do need to use your lighter but you don't want to waste the lighter gas that's in there you can light the wick of the candle um, so you use less lighter gas doing that but you've still got a burning candle that you can continue um, either drying tinder with or, or just igniting a fire I've also used a tea candle in order to um, manage the effects of hypothermia of exposure um, along with my space blanket you just light the tea candle underneath a blanket whether it's a space blanket or a wool blanket or even just a jacket or whatever kind of covering you can find it just creates a pocket of air that you can warm up using that little tea candle using that wick um, and that will warm the air around you and help you to prevent hypothermia I'm going to post the links to all of these items in the description to this video you can also check out the live ready website there are a couple of gear tabs there that you can go shop around on well that's it for me on survival gear if you haven't yet go and check out the survival skills Africa video for a consolidated video on all survival skills where I've put this stuff to really good use drop a comment below let me know where you're watching from and until the next time live ready